healthy. In previous diffraction videos, we learned how to form spots and uh, lines. When you do selected area diffraction using more or less parallel beam, you will get diffraction spots. If your TEM specimen is a bit thick, the electrons will first undergo inelastic scattering, then Bragg diffraction, you will see Kikuchi lines. In this video, we'll discuss how to form diffraction disks from the convergent beam electron diffraction. Let's quickly compare the regular parallel beam diffraction versus the convergent beam diffraction. In the first case, the electron beam will come down with a small convergent semi-angle. A fairly large area of the specimen is illuminated. In this condition, the diffraction will form diffraction spots. In contrast, in the convergent beam electron diffraction, the convergence semi-angle is much larger. Basically, you converge your beam to a very small spot, and a very small area of the specimen is illuminated. In diffraction, you'll get diffraction disks. Looking at the experimentally acquired diffraction patterns on the right from the textbook, the top is a regular diffraction pattern where you see spots. Down the bottom, that's the diffraction from the convergent electron diffraction where you see disks. When setting up the convergent beam electron diffraction, there are a few things we need to consider. Sample thickness, convergence semi-angle, camera length, and defocus. Let's look at this one by one. For sample thickness, most of the TEM specimens we prepare, they have a wedge shape, so near the vacuum it will be very thin. As we get away from the vacuum, the sample is getting thicker and thicker. We know that when the sample is very thin, the diffraction can be approximated using the kinematical approach. In this case, we're simply replacing the diffraction spots with diffraction disks. We don't get any additional information. You'll see why in the next video. In order to make CBAT patterns, the convergent beam electron diffraction patterns, to bear more information, you need the specimen to be fairly thick, definitely more than one mean free path. So this condition is very similar to that you set up for Kikuchi lines acquisition. The second parameter you can play with is the convergence semi-angle. Larger the convergence semi-angle, bigger the disks. To converge the electron beam to a spot, while controlling the convergence angle, you can play with the spot size you use, as well as the condenser aperture you select. Large condenser aperture and small number for the spot size will lead to large convergence semi-angle. The example from the textbook here shows what happens when you keep increasing the convergence semi-angle. As the convergence semi-angle becomes larger and larger, the disks will start overlapping. The third parameter you can change is the camera length. If you want to look at the fine details in the diffraction pattern, you want to zoom in and use a small camera lens. If you want to have an overview of the entire diffraction pattern, you want to zoom out and you can increase the camera lens. Let's look at the examples here from the textbook. The first one is the one with the smallest camera lens. You're looking at the diffraction disk from the direct beam. You can also see a lot of details such as zone lines. As you increase the camera length, the center spot becomes smaller, but at the same time you see a lot more information from the diffracted beams. You lose some details, but you gain the field of view. The diffraction disks you see here are in the zero-order Lowy zone. You can increase the camera length further. You still see the direct beam, the diffraction disks in the zero-order Lowy zone. In addition, you see a ring here, and this is in the first order Lowry zone, which is part of the higher order Lowry zone. We'll discuss zone lines, zero order Lowry zone, and higher order Lowry zone in the next video. The fourth parameter you can play with is the focus. In CBAT, it's very interesting. In many cases, you can actually see part of the specimen in the diffraction disks. An example is shown here. This is part of the specimen. And this is the vacuum. If you can see an image of your specimen in the diffraction disk, you know that you're not in focus. If you do diffraction focus, you don't see the vacuum anymore. And the thickness fringes shows you very nice symmetry. If you play with the diffraction focus from under focus to over focus, what you see in the diffraction disks will reverse. Now the specimen is on the top and the vacuum is there on the bottom. By the end of this video, 
I hope you have gained a basic understanding of what convergent beam electron diffraction patterns look like, what experimental parameters you can use when setting up the seabed acquisition. In the next video, we'll discuss very briefly what information we can obtain from seabed.